Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what is the kingdom now and forever. Amen. There is one hope in God's call to us. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father and all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God of truth and sacrifice, we give thanks for your servant, William Alexander Gary, who, like the church's first martyr, gave witness to your liberating gospel and echoed Christ's healing words of forgiveness. May we also seek your truth as we offer ourselves in obedience to the same. All this we pray through him who is forever the bishop and reformer of our souls, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> when they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's about today. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's about today. It's Bishop Gary Sunday. Why do we celebrate the lives of the saints? Lives lived so many years ago. Because it changes our today. We celebrate the lives of saints and martyrs, not so we can look back at their achievements only, but so that we can invite that same spirit of sacrifice to empower us as we respond to the struggles of our own day. And we do so in similar fashion. So we're not celebrating Bishop Gary. It's not a, wasn't he a great old guy day. That's not what we're doing at all. What we're asking ourselves is, can we do more than simply remember? Can we employ that same spirit and devotion to serve, as did Bishop Gary, in our own day with all of its challenges, all of its prejudices, all of its injustices? Gary writes, we strive for unity, not uniformity. Uniformity is mechanical, barren, unfruitful, and unprofitable. Unity is organic, living, and capable of endless growth. That's a nice way of saying we're not done yet. There's more to learn. There's more to grow. And that will involve change. John Henry Newman said in his essay on the development of Christian doctrine in the 19th century, Christianity changes in order to remain the same. Christianity changes so that it re can remain the same. That's the great spirit of the prophet Isaiah in our first reading, who speaks of the spirit of the Lord empowering us to do many things. Guess what? The spirit seldom empowers us to do the same old thing. It's calling us to fresh insight and to a new way of understanding God's presence. The oppressed, the brokenhearted in the prophet's day, in Bishop Gary's day, and in our present day, they still require a response from God's spirit-filled and, yes, God's spirit-directed people. And so Gary would go on to explain, no religion can survive which is not capable of adapting itself to restatement and reinterpretation in the light of the science and philosophy of the day. It has been the glory of Christianity that from the beginning it has shown itself capable of change and development. I'm reminded of that story of the, the old church warden meeting the new young rector for the first time and showing him the church. 
The first words out of the mouth of the old church warden to the new young rector, this. Father, the only thing that changes around here is you. The only thing that changes around here is you. Well, Bishop Gary would disagree because his savior would disagree. My friends, status quo is worshiped only by the oppressor, not by the oppressed. Shall we stand with Bishop Gary? If not, you can stand with his racist murderer who resisted the bishop's call for the church to change in its day. Shall we stand with the money changers in the temple or for the one who came to turn over those tables and do something new? You can't have it any other way. There's not an Episcopal friendly version when Jesus went into the temple and said to the people at the tables of the money, uh, would you mind moving your tables a few feet? Uh, I, I just think we could work this out together. Good is good, bad is bad. Make a choice. Young Saul. Young Saul did nothing wrong as he watched the murder of the church's first mur uh, martyr. His problem wasn't that he did something wrong. His problem was that he didn't do anything. He simply allowed it to happen. Bishop Gary's actions in his day, these were done amidst a world of doing nothing, of apathy, and of injustice. Gary teaches that Christ did not die instead of us. Christ died that we might learn to die like him. Put another way, Christ doesn't come to replace us. He comes to invite us in and to include us. Bishop Gary knew what he needed to do. And when a priest asked to meet with him, the bishop didn't see him as the racist he was. He saw him as a priest as a child of God. Gary continues, it is a person, not a dogma that invites our faith. It is a person, not a code of ethics that claim our love. It is not the doctrine nor the ethics of Christianity that have proved themselves so irresistibly attractive, but it is the life and the character of Christ. The life and the character of Christ. In John's Gospel we read, God so loved the world that he gave us what? Did he give us a book? No. If he gave us a book, we would be Biblians. We're Christians, not Biblians. Did he give us some new rules? No way. In fact, he simplified the rules because Jesus realized that sometimes the more we have rules, the more we can cover over the compassion of God. No, God so loved the world that he gave a son. God gave himself a person and a relationship. The life and character of Christ as at the center of our identity. That, my friends, will move mountains. That will destroy poverty. That will bring respect and dignity for every human being. As our gospel suggests, Jesus is more light than law, more light than law. You see, the light's first great gift is that it reveals the problem. It shows us the wound. It makes visible the challenge. But our gospel today also warns us of a world where darkness hides the truth and whispering makes sure that that truth remains untold and unlearned. That world of whispering and darkness made sure that Bishop Gary's story remained untold for many, many years. Gary writes, God seeks to save us not as separated individuals, but as members of a family, a society, a kingdom of God. In other words, 
God saves us with, not God saves us from. Yes, baptism seals our relationship with God, but it also brings us into fellowship with his church, the body. How can we live seeing ourselves apart from the family of God's creation and church? All are created in God's image and likeness. How is it we value some over others? How do we value ourselves over others? Bishop Gary sacrificed his own life as he valued others and because he valued others. As we baptize the little one today, let's remember that baptism makes us one with God and with everyone in the family. Bishop Gary continues, if we are to be truly Catholic, universal as Christ himself is Catholic, then we must have a church broad enough to embrace within its communion every living human soul. That's the baptismal covenant. As Christians, we will shortly confess that we will respect the dignity of every human being. Well, do we? Have you watched any of the news in the past week where we value some people over other people? I like the simplicity of Bishop Curry when he said, separating children from their parents is not loving your neighbor as yourself. Who could argue with that? But there's enough in our own lives to challenge us as well. Every living human soul, Gary, you see, is rooted in our good Samaritan God, where Jesus radically redefines what it means to be a neighbor. He moves beyond tribe and culture, nationality or religion. Jesus says that now anyone who has a need is your neighbor, is my neighbor. We can choose to ignore that directive, but if we do so, we need a new religion. This is what Christ demands. And so here comes the challenge. Let's be clear what our identity is as Christian. Let's be clear it is the cross on our foreheads that marks us, and the cross alone. The cross on our foreheads marks us, not the flag in our hand, not the dollars in our wallet or purse, not our gun in our holster. The cross on our foreheads. Well, I've been reflecting on something this last week. You know, most of those little ones that have come across the border, I bet you almost all of them have a cross on their foreheads. How do we reflect from that? How do we realize what our mission is if today we say we are one in Christ with everyone who has been baptized into his holy name? And that's why Bishop Gary reminds us, let's not romanticize, the belief he shares with us comes at a price. It would cost him his life it wasn't popular. But if you think the death of Bishop Gary silenced him, you are greatly mistaken. Bishop Gary continues to be the life and spirit of our new beginnings in this diocese, for he is one with the Savior who is the model and mentor for us all. The one who sacrifices all and in the end will renew all things. In dying, will kill death. In rising, will bring us all to new heights and to greater depths. Amen. Continue on page 301 of the Book of Common Prayer. I'd ask the parents and godparents to stand. 
as their candidate is presented. Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? You put your whole trust in his grace and love. You promise to follow and obey him as your Lord. The congregation, please stand. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in his life in Christ? We will. Let's join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and died and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the church of the dead. You believe in God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who has received the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer.
be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John, was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Brooks, oh, baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Brooks, Amen. Amen. you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and you are marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit <coughs> you bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. <laughs> like another quiet Sunday at Grace Church Cathedral. Welcome, thank you for being here on this very special day. Uh, note, a couple of notices not in the bulletin, just to let you know when we have Saints Days and Holy Days during the week, we do celebrate the Eucharist at noon. Uh, tomorrow will be for St. John the Baptist, and Friday will be for the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. Again, a 12 o'clock celebration uh, in, the, uh, in the chapel, in our Martyrs Chapel, in the Bishop Gary Chapel. Well, thank you for this celebration. 
but I have a little deed to do here, because you'll notice that in uh, 2017, uh, I established an award given in honor of this Bishop Gary, the eighth Bishop of the Diocese of South Carolina. The award is presented to individuals who best exemplify the spirit of sacrifice that Bishop Gary modeled in his life and witness as the Bishop of South Carolina from 1908 to 1928. On June 24th, 2018, uh, the Bishop Gary Medal is now presented to the Venerable Calhoun Walpole, Sub-Dean of Grace Church Cathedral. I don't know what's better, offering her the medal or that she didn't have a clue. Yeah. <laughs> and let me just en enjoy this moment. Callie has championed the witness of Bishop Gary for many years. It has been her witness above all others that has caused Bishop Gary's story to be known and celebrated among the faithful. Her patience in telling and retelling our martyr's story has led to Gary's example being shared widely throughout the Episcopal Church and the Anglican Communion. I'm gonna ask the first recipient our Chancellor, Tom Tisdale, to place uh, the medal on Archdeacon Walpole. Congratulations. Uh, um, Michael, I'm honored, um, but there is something that they say about payback that I can't say in church. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> how do you follow that? And it's ironic, the words are, walk in love as Christ <laughs> and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his death, death, we, we proclaim, proclaim his resurrection, resurrection we, we await his coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Mary, the mother of our Lord, blessed William, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ to those to whom Christ shall send you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.